In this video, we provide the solution to question number 10 for practice exam number one for math 1220, in which case we have to evaluate the indefinite integral e to the two theta times sine of three theta d theta. Now, the fact that I see this exponential times a sine function, this makes me think I want to use integration by parts, more specifically integration by cycles, because as you take derivatives of e to the two theta or antiderivatives of e to the two theta, you always get back e to the two theta with a constant multiple that is changing. Um, same thing with sine. When you take the derivative of sine or the antiderivative of sine, you're always going to get back a constant multiple of cosine, for which if you do that again, you'll get a constant multiple of sine. And so if I do integration by parts enough times, I'm going to cycle back to the original expression. So that's going to give me this integration by cycles. Okay, so for my first iteration, it doesn't really matter which one you do, uh, just think, just be consistent about it. I'm gonna take u to be e to the two theta. That means du is gonna equal two e to the two theta, d theta. Then for dv, I'm gonna take that to be sine of three theta, d theta. And that means v is gonna equal one third, um, well actually negative one third cosine of three theta. So if we apply that, I'm also going to use the simplification that the original integral I'm just going to refer to as capital I, because I'm going to need that later on. So I is equal to, if we apply integration by parts, we're going to get negative one third E to the two theta cosine of three theta. Then we're going to subtract from that the integral of V du. So we get a negative one third cosine of three theta, that's the V, times by the D, the DU, which is two E to the two theta D theta, like so. Um, and so we, of course, can simplify that. We can make that a plus negative there, plus plus. Uh, let me just erase that negative sign, make it better like that. Um, and then there's these constant coefficients in there. You don't necessarily have to do too much at once. Uh, negative one third E to the two theta, cosine of three theta, because there's this one third right here, there's this two, I'm gonna bring out the two thirds out in front, and then I'm also gonna put the E back in front. And so this is what we predicted, we're gonna get something that looks like E to the two theta times cosine of three theta. So I'm gonna do integration by parts again, um, that's how we do it with cycles, you have to do it at least twice. Uh, well, I guess maybe you could get away with it once, but not in this situation. Um, but make sure when you do integration by parts, you're consistent. If u was your exponential beforehand, you're going to do that again. So 2 e to the 2 theta, d theta. And then for dv, um, the trig function is going to serve that role this time, cosine of 3 theta, d theta. And so then v is going to equal 1 third sine of 3 theta, like so. So putting those things in there, you're going to get i equals negative one third e to the two theta cosine of three theta. Then for this next one, do remember that the two thirds applies to everything coming up just now. We're gonna take u times v, so we're gonna get one third e to the two theta sine of three theta. And then we should get an integral that resembles the original one we're looking for. We're gonna get a minus uh, integral of one third sine of three theta times cosine times two times e to the two theta d theta like so all right so up to a constant multiple i want you to be aware that that integral right there is in fact the original integral so let's write that one more time i equals negative one third e to the two theta cosine of three theta now if i distribute this two thirds throughout you're going to get two thirds times a third so we're going to get two ninths times e to the two theta sine of three theta. Um, likewise though, here we have a two times a third, so that's a two thirds. So then when we distribute that, we're going to get negative four ninths. And then once we take the coefficients out, we have an e to the two theta sine to the three theta, that's the original integral again. So that's gonna give you this i right there. So what I want to do is then add to both sides of the equation, this four ninths i. Upon doing so on the other side, we have a 9 ninths. You add a 4 ninths to it. Um, that's going to give us a 13 ninths i equal to then the negative 1 third e to the 2 theta cosine of 3 theta. Then we get this 2 ninths e to the 2 theta sine of 3 theta plus a constant. 
Um, and so then we're going to times both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of this coefficient. We're going to times both sides by 9 thirteenths. We have to do this on the right-hand side as well, 9 thirteenths. And so then in the end, our integral, i, is equal to, well, we distribute the 9 thirteenths on the other side. You're going to end up with a negative 3 thirteenths e to the 2 theta cosine of 3 theta. On the next one, uh, the 9s cancel out, and you end up with a 2 thirteenths e to the 2 theta sine of 3 theta. And then you do times an like arbitrary constant by a specific constant. That's just going to give you back a constant again. So I'm just going to still write that as a plus c. Um, and if you want to switch the order, write the sine before the cosine, you can do so. But that then gives us the antiderivative we're looking for. And we accomplish this using integration by cycles.